<laughs> Ready? She's quick. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Karen Bryant for M. Mahid. I'm here with Miguel Torres, victorious tonight. How do you feel about your performance? Um, you know, I thought I did a good job. I, w I didn't come out the way I wanted to. I wanted to knock out her submission. But um, I was expecting Nick Pace to come out a little bit more heavy, you know, heavier on the offense and trying to take the fight from me like the way Demetrius did. Mm -hmm. um, I was expecting him to pour it on hard. And uh, he was very relaxed and sitting back on his right hand. So I didn't want to come forward and get, catch a big punch. You know, I knew what he was waiting for. And it was very apparent from the first minute of the fight. So I had to had a fight, fight, a, uh, fight a smarter game plan. But um, like I said, you know, I was able to stop a couple of shots and uh, get up from a takedown and, and put the pressure and wear him down. And, uh, you know, striking-wise, I felt okay. But once we were in the clinch, I felt totally at home. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask in the first round. You landed a really sweet, really sweet right hand on him. Did you feel like boxing was going to come a big, a big, a big part in this fight for you? A hundred percent. You know, in all my fights, I have the reach, and, and I feel like boxing is going to play a, a key role. But um, I think it's my overall game that that is going to wear guys down. You know, everyone can be good at one thing, but it's the it's the high level guys that separate themselves from the pack by being good at everything. Mm -hmm. And how much did you want to come out here and prove a point after dropping a fight to Demetrius? Um, you know, I, I always want to prove a point. You know, especially after the last fight. You know, I thought I did enough to win the fight. You know, I had Demetrius defending the whole time on the bottom. And uh, they just seen that he was on top and gave him the decision. But um, that's the way the game is now. That's, they see you on top and they, they think you're going to win. So like even in this fight, you know, he took me down and uh, I didn't want to play guard. You know, I wanted to get up right away and put the pressure on him. And, uh, you know, working with the guys and with the Black Zillions and every, all my boys in TriStar and my boys in, uh, in, in Hammond and in Torres Martial Arts, you know, I've been working that for a long time and, and today it came out. Yeah, I want to talk about your camp because I see Tyrone Spong walking around here. I know he's with the Black Zillions. We also see Faraz. So let's talk about what you did leading up to this and why you seem to have dabbled in three different camps. Um, well, you know, I had to, uh, you know, take care of some, some personal issues and uh, I met Glenn Robinson and he helped me out a lot. He flew me down to Florida to meet the guys from the team and, and to work out with them. And, uh, you know, I, I got a lot of things situated that were holding me back. And uh, I met Tyrone, and from the first day that we met, we clicked right away. Mm -hmm. And I ended up staying with him for two weeks and working on a lot of things. And uh, then went to Montreal and with Faraz, you know. Everyone thinks I switched to the Black Zillions. No, I'm still a TriStar. I'm still a Faraz, a hobby. Yeah, I've added to my family. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Black Zillions could use a little bit of Latino flair in there as well, right? It's the, it's the, <laughs> the, the crack of Mexa Black Zillions. <laughs> <laughs> we had it Matt round too, so throw him a little shout out. Very nice. Congratulations to you. Nice fight. Thank you very much. Cool. Congrats. That was the first thing.